Welcome to Superhero Pal. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frumkin. Well, I'm sure you all know that nothing has the creative communities, you know, movies, TV, comic books, and probably even video games, more worried than the developments in AI. Artificial intelligence, which I'm pretty sure is still an oxymoron. While it's clearly not ready for prime time, the question is, when will it be and is everybody going to lose their jobs? Unfortunately, I think that will definitely happen one day, but I don't think it's going to happen in our lifetime. But until that day comes, clever people are still going to try to use it the best they can. Like VFX artist Daria Thorensteinsson from Norway. Apparently, he's spent the better part of a year lampooning American movies and sitcoms with an AI-created show called The Max Joe Show. Yes, the video you're watching right now was created by an AI. Daria says he mainly uses Midjourney, Luma, and Runway to make the show, but he is still writing the show himself and doing a lot of post-production and, I assume, editing it all together. That's the special sauce that I think AI is a long way away from being capable of doing, putting everything together in a coherent fashion. To this point, Daria is even using the limitations of an AI creation to enhance his vision of the show. Because without a doubt, the show is terrible. It's awful on every level as a final television production. But Daria makes that the point. It's supposed to be a stupid, over-the-top, crappy Hollywood production, and it works great. Quite frankly, I could totally see this on Adult Swim. It would fit right in there with Aqua Teen Hunger Force and other shows like that. So despite this being the death of art, it's pretty impressive. But what does all this mean? Well, simply put, it means we've got interesting days ahead of us. Another impressive AI work out there was the Corridor Crew's anime rock, paper, scissors video. They made a whole seven minute cartoon by AI or rather an AI rotoscoped cartoon. Because they first filmed themselves, and then frame by frame had an AI spit out images in the cartoon style that they liked. Now in both Daria and the Corridor Crew's case, it was a laborious process. But would it have been cheaper or faster to do it without an AI? Mm, probably not. But considering someone had to hold the AI's hand through the whole process, and the final piece really isn't that good? I just don't see AI taking over all the creative jobs anytime soon. And to that point, there seems to be two current warring fractions over AI right now. One side is claiming that this is just the tip of the iceberg. And yes, an AI movie just as good as anything James Cameron has ever made is just a few short years away. While the other side says, the AI computers have already studied everything they can. They've got all the human movies, pictures, drawings, writings, and this is the best it can do. It's not going to get any better because there's nothing more it can learn from. Which side is correct? Well, I don't have any idea. I mean, surely things can be refined, but yeah, maybe they need to invent another process in order to move beyond what they can currently do today. Now, aside from everyone losing their jobs, there are two other boogeymen in AI. The power it takes to run the systems, and are the systems stealing? With the power, it's been said the power needed to make one AI image is equal to a full charge on your cell phone. Now, let's think about how often you charge your cell phone. Once, twice a day? Now, think about how many images the corridor crew had to make to get their seven minute cartoon. We're talking 24 images a second. And that's just all the images they used, not even counting all the images they discarded. So you can easily see how an energy crisis must be just around the corner if AI computing was adapted the way their inventors, or rather their investors, would like it to be. As for stealing, like any real person, in order to get better at doing something, you have to copy the work of the people who came before you. We accept this as normal with humans, you know, with a few limitations, 
But with AI, people are much quickly to say they're just outright stealing. Saying that the machines are merely copying and pasting images and words together in order to make their final product. But everything seems to be pointing to, no, that's not happening. They're not copying and pasting. If that was the case, a lot of these weird errors, like six-fingered people, wouldn't be happening. From what I understand, they're prediction machines, to a degree. So based on whatever it just did, you know, wrote or drew, it predicts what should happen next. As in, what's next to a finger? Well, another finger. So personally, I don't think they're stealing any more than a human artist does. But just as with humans, there should be some limitations. So overall for myself, I really don't fear AI content all that much. Another reason would be because as anyone who has ever dealt with clients or even managers knows, those people can be nuts. It's very typical for a designer to hear stuff like, oh, that's great, now move it a half a centimeter to the left, but keep it in the middle. I need you to lower it more, but don't lower it too much. I want it to be blue, but not blue blue. That's not blue. And hey, you're the artist. You should know what fuchsia looks like, because I'm pretty sure that's not it. Or say with uh, writing, you know, can you make the characters do more, but make sure they don't do more than the main character? And the character needs to show more concern, but not guilt. I mean, it's hard enough for a human creator to know what the hell these people are talking about, let alone an AI box. So that's why I believe an artist is always going to be needed to be in control of these things and be able to take over when needed. You know, Dari wrote the script of his sitcom. He didn't trust the AI to know how to achieve the sense of parody that he wanted. So while I'm sure it's going to get ugly out there, human creators are always going to be needed. But either way, my friend, I will now tell you the secret of how to kill artificial intelligence, for the most part. Copyright. If the governments of the world decide that AI creations, no matter how much human input there is, are uncopyrightable, then AI content is dead in its tracks. This is important because humans, especially board members of big media companies, like to own things. You want to have a TV show on the Cartoon Network, the Disney Channel? The first step is they get to own it. And what they're actually owning is the copyright. But if there's no copyright, then they don't get any licensing deals and there's no adaption deals and heck, the general public can do whatever they want with it. And if that's the case, no company will ever touch it. George Lucas proved this case with Star Wars years ago. 20th Century Fox let him own it and he got super rich. Hollywood quickly learned its lesson and will never let that happen again. So if you take away the ability to own AI-created material, no one is ever going to use AI-created material. Heck, even the guy who won an art contest with an AI painting is upset that people are selling the image on t-shirts and whatnot, and he isn't getting a dime. Now, even with this, I'm sure someone somewhere will still be playing around with this stuff, but no one's jobs will be at stake. But heck, you could even get real tricky by saying AI-created contracts aren't binding or AI research isn't admissible in court. That would be a huge game changer in the AI world. But now, is the government really going to do such a thing? Who knows? But it would kind of prove whose side they're on. Poor workers or uh, rich companies? Anyway, what do you think about this? Are we all doomed? Or are we just in for a really bumpy ride? Either way, thanks for spending time with me. And if you could be so kind to like, subscribe, and notify, I promise I won't turn my channel over to the AI. Extra fingers for everyone. <laughs>